10 Countries with the Strictest Laws in the World Number 10 The only country today that is still purely communist, North Korea accepts tourists from other nations other than South Korea and the United States. These escorts will accompany tourists from the day they come in to the day they fly out to ensure they are not breaking any rules, such as speaking against the North Korean government. Everything is controlled by the administration, from TV, radio, and print. Contents for news and broadcast are censored. Internet access is only granted to the ruling elite and even their online activities are strictly monitored. Sexual relationships between non-married couples are prohibited. The government stating police are tasked to ensure no such relationships occur. North Korea also has a strict fashion code, for example women are not allowed to wear pants and men should cut their hair every 15 days. Number 9 Unlike most countries governed by philosophical tenets, Iran's governance is based on religion and that is the Sharia law. Prohibited in Iran are actions and propaganda against the government. A slight statement in the negative about how bad the Iranian government is is enough to get you in trouble. Logging on to social media sites like Facebook, Google+, and YouTube also means trouble. Men cannot sport certain hairstyles other than what is prescribed in Islam. Women are not allowed to go out in public unless they adhere to certain dress codes, such as covering their head in hijab and avoiding skinny jeans. Western music such as jazz, rock, and rap are strictly prohibited. Alcoholic beverages for both men and women are highly discouraged. Number 8 Violence has increased in Syria over the years as clashes between the government and the rebel forces continue to mount. To quell anti-government actions, the Syrian regime has resorted to a nationwide communications blackout. Communications through mobile and landline phones and internet access are significantly limited. Foreign news correspondents are banned from entering the country and news is heavily monitored. Syrian journalists who act against the government are tortured or, worse, end up dead. Number 7 Situated above the Horn of Africa, Eritrea has been ruled by President Taiya Zofiwerki, who came to power in 1993. The president and his government have full control of the media in the country, with their agencies having total control of the news and who writes the news. Nothing gets published or broadcasted without the approval of the president's office. Religion is also controlled. No one is allowed to perform public worship and one has to apply as a member to a certain sect before they can be allowed to practice their faith. Number 6 In Equatorial Guinea, people are discouraged from learning how to read and write. There are no bookstores or newsstands in the country. Tourism is also low as foreigners are normally not allowed to enter the country. The government, which is ran by President Teodoro Obion Nimambasago since a coup installed him in 1973, controls the TV and radio stations. Foreigners who are allowed to enter Equatorial Guinea are closely monitored and prohibited from filming scenes and conditions that portray poverty. Number 5 while Saudi Arabia has recently took down their curtains and huddled with the rest of the world, the country is still deeply rooted in laws that stem from religion and tradition. Social laws, which mostly apply to women, are stern. For example, women are not allowed to drive or be with a man who is not a relative or go out in public in casual clothes. Internet access is restricted and media outlets are closely watched. Senior editors can get fired and arrested if they allow to publish or broadcast any content that says something negative about the government. Number 4 Home to Cuban cigars and the late Fidel Castro, Cuba is mainly projected as a top holiday destination in the world. But behind its paradise beaches and hip-moving Latin music, Cuba is still a communist country and those who speak out against the government are always in trouble. Internet is screened regularly and writers who post anti-government sentiments will likely face jail time if they get arrested. Cubans know how to party and they know their alcohol. But playing reggaeton is a big no-no. Number 3 
China is a booming economy that can take the world by storm. With China being open to other nations, it has projected a very positive image amidst territorial rows with its neighbors. But one should understand that China is still a communist country and that means no one should ever cross the government, ever. Anti-government propaganda is immediately traced and those responsible are silenced. It is a crime to instill Western thoughts and influences in the minds of the Chinese youth. Media is controlled. So is access to the Internet. Nobody is allowed to discuss topics that pertain to rebellion, change, reform, and most specifically, the Tiananmen protests of 1989. Number 2. Many believe that the feudal system that once was in place in Japan a long time ago had significant influences on how the modern Japanese government does its business. The hierarchy of authority is prevalent in almost all structures, in the household, school, office, and the workplace. Everybody respects the one who is higher than him. Japanese companies also adhere to strict working policies and all employees, from the CEO down to the lowly staff are expected to perform and excel in their designations. Talking about World War II and the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki is prohibited. Number 1. Singapore may be small, but the government's firm implementation of their rules and policies on locals and tourists alike are notches higher compared to other countries in this list. Any wrong move will cost someone a fine. Spitting in public has a fine. Smoking in public will get you in serious trouble. Wearing the wrong dress when going out will land you in jail. And those are just petty violations. One can only imagine how stringent the Singaporean government is when dealing with serious crimes. But this very solid adherence to the rules makes Singapore a world-class economy with standards of living rated higher than most advanced European nations. Here are top 10 nations hardest to invade. Sometimes geographical location makes it harder to invade a country, but at the end of the day it is military which saves your country. 10 Japan. Active military force 247,150 troops. Reserved military force 56,100 troops. Defense budget 40.9 billion dollars 9. South Korea. Active military force 630,000 troops. Reserved military force 2,970,000 troops, 2.9 million. Defense budget 36.4 billion dollars. 8. Turkey. Active military force 639,551. Reserved military force 378,700. Defense budget $18.2 billion. 7. Germany. Active military force 176,509 troops. Reserved military force 40,000 troops. Defense budget $39.4 billion. 6. France. Active military force 208,916 troops. Reserved military force 27,785 troops. Defense budget $50.9 billion. 5. United Kingdom. Active military force 153,470 troops. Reserved military force 81,850 troops. Defense budget $55.5 billion. 4. India. Active military force 1,481,953 troops, 1.4 million. Reserved military force 1,155,000 troops, 1.1 million. Defense budget $51.3 billion. 3. China. Active military force 2,300,000 troops, 2.3 million. Reserved military force 2,400,000 troops, 2.4 million. Defense budget $250 billion. 2. Russia. Active military force 771,000 troops. Reserved military force 2 million troops, 2 million. 
Defense budget $66.4 billion. 1. United States of America. Active military force 1,281,900 troops, 1.2 million. Reserved military force 801,200 troops. Defense budget $596 billion. What are the top 10 countries most difficult to conquer? The nuclear perspective. In the matter of the ability to counter a threat of conquest there is a stark division between two types of countries, those that have nuclear arms that those that do not. In our modern world that means that a country faced by the threat of conquest will use nuclear arms if that country possesses such arms. Becoming the target of a nuclear strike also poses an existential threat that potential aggressors will seek to avoid at all costs. This means that countries armed with nuclear weapons will be the most difficult to conquer. On that basis the following nine countries qualify as being the most difficult to conquer, from a nuclear war perspective there are no other unconquerable countries. The drop of nuclear weapons on any non-nuclear country can reasonably expected to end in capitulation by that country. Remember Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the surrender of Japan. From this perspective there is in other words no tenth most difficult country. Note, it is possible to argue that the use of nuclear arms is such an extreme and therefore unlikely event that it makes a ranking on the basis of nuclear capability highly theoretical. In reply, it should be noted that the act of conquest, an extreme occurrence, is not at all a theoretical notion. We can see the instances such as Afghanistan by both the USSR and the USA. Kuwait by Iraq, and Iraq by the US. For this reason, it makes sense to wonder which countries would be fundamentally off-limits as candidates for conquest. Realistically, the danger of nuclear retaliation sets the hard limit. Non-Nuclear Rankings The rankings change when nuclear capability is not the primary consideration. Without nuclear capability, a combination of sufficient manpower and hardware but also training and competence becomes critical to the defense of a country. While by no means a fail-safe assumption, it seems reasonable to assume that the best armed countries are likely to be the ones most difficult to conquer. To borrow from Wikipedia, a ranking by manpower and hardware is likely to look as follows, note how Pakistan, North Korea, and Israel now drop out of the 10 most difficult countries to conquer, with Japan, South Korea, Italy and Turkey now coming into focus. Global Economic Power All countries included in the second table above also belong in the top 15 by GDP, PPP. See table below, this congruity can be explained by the fact that it requires massive financial resources for a country to arm itself to the level of the second table. Observe however that one major economic power, Germany, ranking 5th by GDP, is missing from the top 10 of the non-nuclear ranking. The Germans are apparently not seeking to translate their economic weight into a commensurate level of military power. Germany ranked 18th on the military strength indicator table posted on Wikipedia. The UN Security Council As we can see there is an overlap between the first and second table which includes six countries, namely, the United States, Russia, China, India, France and the United Kingdom. Of these six countries, five, the United States, Russia, China, France, and the United Kingdom, are also permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. The permanent members of the UN Security Council have historically also been the premier global powers. When one looks at the sheer military power presented by the two tables above, but also their economic weight, the permanent membership of these countries are apparently quite justified. However, it also demonstrates that India, probably the single most important newly emerging global power, is underrepresented in the global balance of power. India has been seeking permanent membership. More generally, there have also been various calls and proposals for reforming the Security Council, including the allocation of permanent seats and veto rights. 
India has consistently been included as a candidate for permanent membership in the majority of such proposals. However, there appears to be no sense of urgency in reforming the current arrangements. Asymmetrical Power The three rankings above also reveal the degree to which some countries use nuclear armament to compensate a relative weakness in terms of financial and military resources. These countries are North Korea, Pakistan and Israel. Each of these countries in one form or another fear conquest by hostile forces. With North Korea, as mentioned earlier, fearing the United States. Pakistan fearing and seeking parity with India. And Israel seeking deterrence against Arab and Islamic countries that advocate its destruction and annihilation of its population. It should be noted that while North Korea and Pakistan have both armed themselves with nuclear arms to reduce their vulnerability, both countries have in fact historically been notorious as aggressors, rather than potential victims of hostile intent. North Korea is a communist nation with the proclaimed ambition to reunite the peninsula by conquest and to impose communism on the South. This ambition has never been formally retracted. Pakistan has never accepted the borders resulting from the partition of the Indian subcontinent, claiming even now parts of India, mainly the Kashmir territory. One could argue that at present Pakistan is more of a threat to the territorial integrity of India than vice versa. The Korean Peninsula Note how South Korea ranks seventh in the non-nuclear rankings. This is an extraordinarily high ranking of an economy of its size. 14th in terms of GDP. It should be understood that South Korea's investment in a beefy military force reflects its fear of military invasion by North Korea. Observe that North Korea has long been feared as a potential aggressor and aspiring conqueror. The North-South Korea border, the DMZ, length, 250 kilometers or 160 miles, is by far the most heavily armed border on Earth as well as generally regarded as by far the most dangerous border. The total for active military personnel for both countries together number 2. 3,625,000 for South Korea, 1.7 million for North Korea. Concurrently, North Korea's nuclear standing reflects the fear of its rulers of being overthrown by the United States. Ranking by number of military personnel. There is one more ranking that is a significant indicator of military strength, although one that should not be regarded as conclusive, the ranking of countries by number of military and paramilitary personnel. See table below the rankings above include personnel on active duty, reserve duty, and included in paramilitary forces. This ranking, to the extent that we exclude the use of nuclear weapons from the equation, is nevertheless extremely relevant to the issue at hand, namely, determining the most difficult countries to conquer. Arming a lot of people is historically a proven method of making invasion a miserable experience for the would-be conqueror. In this ranking the single most notable metric is the number of reserve military personnel, that is, civilians who are not normally kept under arms but available to fight when a nation mobilizes for war or to defend against invasion. Reserve personnel have usually received some training and usually stocks are kept to quickly arm them when the need arises. Large reserve forces can be counted as formidable deterrents to invasion and conquest. Note that by this ranking North Korea, ranking first, and South Korea, ranking second, are the two 800 pounds gorillas in the global geopolitical room, further corroborating the point made earlier of the Korean Peninsula being the most dangerous area in the world. These two countries rank highest first and second, on both total military personnel and reserve forces. Keep in mind that both countries have nuclear arms, with North Korea, as we have seen above, having its own nuclear weapons, and the US having nuclear weapons stationed in South Korea. Based on this it would be fair to say that both countries are most certainly among the worst nightmares for aspiring conquerors. It it's important to note that for reserve forces to serve as a credible defense, morale among civilians must be high. It requires a strong sense of patriotism among the population. 
Without that reserve forces become unreliable. One surprise on the table, is Vietnam as the third highest ranking, again on both total military personnel and reserve forces. Vietnam's desire to arm its population is the result of it feeling threatened by China with which it has a tense relationship as well as border and territorial disputes. Vietnam and China fought a war in 1978, in which both declared victory. Another remarkable fact is that six of the countries, North and South Korea, Vietnam, India, Russia, and Taiwan, on the list also border on China, the sixth country on the list. Note that, with the possible exception of North Korea, all of these countries have a problematic relationship with China. Not including North Korea, these countries have total forces of almost 23 million against China with 3.2 million. I won't comment on the implications of these statistics as that is a complex topic in its own right and not relevant to the question. Caveat. The non-nuclear ranking is just one of various listings and therefore not conclusive. To provide an example of an alternative listing compare following link with table above, 2018 Military Strength Ranking. Additionally the rankings above are a snapshot of the situation at the time of their publication. Rankings change over time as various emerging economies continue to climb all sorts of rankings. A personal note on conquest. I am aware that historically conquests have been considered moments of glory. One should grasp that this is history written by the conquerors. The other side of the coin is that, from the perspective of the people being conquered, it is the ultimate horror. It has frequently been the story of mass murder and enslavement and even the extinction of the peoples that have been conquered. In my view the glory assigned to conquest is hubris by sociopaths. We should stop glorifying conquest paths. We should stop glorifying conquest paths.